Hello everybody! You are looking at the very biodiverse ecosphere. As you can see it is very green, healthy and other words too. But that's not why we're here today. We're here because of this guy. This is the dragonfly larva that has been living in this ecosphere from the beginning. It has been doing well, a little too well actually. You see it has been eating, a lot. It's been a real killing spree. Although I'm very happy for the dragonfly, it kinda sucks for the animals that are dragonfly food. Eventually, when the dragonfly eats everything, it will starve, if it can actually manage to achieve that. Normally I might say, well, that's an interesting situation and let's see what happens. However, that's not really the point of this ecosphere. The point of this ecosphere was, well, is, to have a closed aquatic ecosystem with a very high biodiversity. The dragonfly kind of ruined that. So, although I really don't like opening ecospheres, I have decided to release the dragonfly. This is the dragonfly larva right here behind the Velisneria. I doubt you can actually see him though. I decided to actually film the opening of the ecosphere because I figured you guys weren't gonna wanna miss this. Now because this looks like a very healthy ecosystem, I don't think it's gonna smell bad at all. But I think it's only fair we do a quick smell test anyway. So uh, I guess here we go. It's open. Boom. Um, I think this is actually the first time ever I opened a healthy ecosphere before, so you know. It's a big moment. Um, anyway, let's smell. It smells perfectly fine, just as I thought. Now, I'm going to try to get the larva out of the ecosphere. Uh, and I don't think I'm gonna film it actually because I'm afraid it's gonna take a long time. So, uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Or am I going to actually try to film the catching of the predator? Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, first off, I'm going to use this little tea strainer because I think a fishing net is just too big and too cumbersome to go and maneuver between all the plants in the ecosphere. Um, so I'm going to try. Here we go. Do you see him? I think this is actually gonna work. <laughs> no way, I already got him. Well, I guess it wasn't hard at all. There he is. <laughs> yes. Let us take a closer look at this beauty of a beast. Here's my hand for skill. I think it's going to grow even more. I just put it in here so we can look at it more closely and maybe figure out what species this actually is. What I did was I looked at pictures of the larva of all the dragonfly species that one may find in the Netherlands and compare them to this larva. And I came to the conclusion, although I can't be 100% sure, that this is a Aeshna cyanea, also known as Southern or Blue Hawker. The Blue Hawker likes to spend its larva days in shallow standing water, with lots of shade and a lot of stuff in the water. So it's no wonder this larva had a jolly good time in the ecosphere. This particular dragonfly is approximately one and a half years old. It spent its first winter as an egg. This summer it turned into a larva and now we're here. Next summer it will turn into an adult dragonfly and die. I thought it would be cool to see it eat something, but it probably wasn't too concerned with food at this point. With the ecosphere open I wanted to check on the floating plants because they're quite hard to see otherwise. It looks like the duckweed has outcompeted both the water cabbage and water sprangles, which is unfortunate but not entirely unexpected, because duckweed, 
well, duckweed is duckweed. So I guess the ecosphere is becoming a closed ecosystem again on the 25th of October 2020. You might be wondering what's going to happen with the dragonfly. Well, I thought it would be cool to put it in this little aquarium to observe it more closely. You might recognize this aquarium as the tadpole tank. Now it's redecorated as a dirty pond full of bacteria for our dragonfly friend. He's gonna love it. I'm going to feed it wild caught Daphnia and Cyclops. Now that the dragonfly is not inside the ecosphere anymore, it will be really interesting to see how the ecosystem is going to develop further. The larva has eaten a lot of the smaller animals, but it hasn't driven any species to extinction. So the question is, do these species have enough individuals left to thrive in this ecosystem? It looked straight into the microscope at a high magnification and when I went to a lower magnification to get a better look, it looked away again. What a jerk. I kept it in this aquarium for about two months. Then it got too cold outside to catch Daphnia and Cyclops. For all the dragonfly larvae living outside, that isn't much of a problem. Because as it gets colder, their metabolism slows down and they require less food. But this larva is inside, where it's warm, so I was worried it might starve and decided to release it. Let's take a quick look at some of the animals currently living in this jar, whose lives might change now that the dragonfly is gone. All of the snails weren't really preyed upon, so not much will change for them. I don't believe flatworms were on the list of favorite dragonfly food either. This particular flatworm is a Dugesia lugubris, a type of black flatworm. You might remember that when putting this ecosphere together, we found a little egg ball of this species on a leaf. So it's not unexpected to see these gliding around. It did take a bit long though. It looks like they're doing well, because they produced quite a few new egg balls. These egg balls, or cocoons, I'm not quite sure about the terminology, contain about one to four eggs each. Small crustaceans, such as copepods and ostracods, were heavily preyed upon by the dragonfly, but they weren't completely wiped out, so it will be interesting to see if they can manage to grow in numbers again. This is some sort of small crustacean, but what you guys are really interested in, of course, are the boogie worms. The tube effects did not activate the predatory instincts of the murderous larva, and as a result are still quite plentiful. As you may remember, there's evidence that these little aquatic beetles, Hygotus inequalis, were hunted by the larvae. However, it seems as though, at least from this footage, they have too tough an exoskeleton to be eaten. In any case, I really enjoyed them swimming around in this jar. And there's a different kind of planaria in this ecosystem as well. So, that was just a short overview of some of the animals living in the ecosphere. These weren't all the animals, but this video is getting quite long already. So this was sort of a 3-5 to five month update on this biodiverse ecosphere. Dragonfly larva. Thanks for watching and I wish you a Christmas.